Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, here's the mystery card you're waiting for. Uh, get out of the bag here. Alright, any guesses? Um, this is a sound card. <laughs> Probably one of the world's first sound cards ever. Uh, this is from uh, Solid State Music. Um, so, what does it do? It has no markings. It's just a bunch of traces. There are no U numbers, there are no R numbers, there's no nothing. It'd be a little bit difficult to build this board if it didn't have the documentation. But, I do. This is the SB1, 1977. Um, plug compatible with the Altair 8800 and MSI 8080. Or any other systems using the Altair bus. So before there was even S S100. Um, frequency range from 15 hertz to 25 kilohertz. Nine octaves. You can change the volume 15 different levels. And the waveform can be defined in a 32 byte of memory. So there's a, as a, there's a, a D to A converter on here. Um, and you can change the shape of the, uh, the waveform with a repeating uh, 32 byte uh, envelope. Um, and there's attack and sustain, so you can modulate the, uh, the signal. Uh, let's see what else it says in here. Um, Mm. Functional check. Well, how to put it together. There's some uh, a simple program and some adjustments. Uh, this is kind of the basics. There's a waveform. Uh, you run it through a, a voltage controlled amplifier so you can uh, change the volume uh, with a with an envelope and um, there's a bunch of registers to change pitch, octave, alright, well, here we go, let's see what's this say, uh, 20 megahertz master oscillator, divide by n counter, 8 bit frequency, um, and then there's a 4 bit octave, uh, so, 16 octaves, 256 frequencies, uh, and then there's another uh, counter to bring it down into the audio range here. You're starting with 20 megahertz, so counting it down, uh, another 256. And... Well, it's interesting. So, I have a schematic. Let's take a look at that. Uh, a little bit big to fit on the camera here, but we can take a look. I think the, the place to start on this, I haven't looked at this yet, um, is probably this section here, uh, which looks like the uh, D to A converter. It looks like an, uh, a 2 R ladder. Um, so we have an 8-bit DAC, uh, which is run by some RAM. So there's a 2101, two RAMs. So these RAM locations probably have those 32 bytes that, keep, that uh, circulate. And those are fed by a counter, a couple counters. So it's cycling through the RAM and typical addressing, uh, bringing in data. Uh, we have some, looks like we have some uh, something called repeating, something called envelope and a jumper location. Uh, looks like we have another uh, 
DAC here, a uh, 4-bit DAC, and um, the output of that is running up. It's a, a line called envelope, so that's modulating the uh, amplitude. Uh, envelope runs into a, a buffer, just a current syncing buffer, and that's pulling on this SSM 2000, which must be a voltage controlled amplifier. Uh, so the uh, waveform coming from this DAC is modulated by the DAC uh, down here and uh, goes to audio out. So pretty simple. Uh, there's two voltage controlled amplifiers. Uh, one for the envelope and one for the volume. And the volume is um, looks like there's another DAC here, uh, a four bit DAC. Um, this is a 8255 PIO chip, so this is three 8 bit ports. So looks like one of the ports is driving a counter. Uh, a load a load counter uh, one is driving that little volume DAC uh, this is driving a uh, something I don't know and there's another 8 bits uh, driving some timing so these are timing signals might be uh, how many bits to repeat or something like that. Uh, here's the master clock, 20 megahertz. Uh, SBI synthesizer, solid state music, 1977. Pretty cool. All right. So in the manual, it talks about uh, what kind of software this would use. And it talks about a MUS-X1 uh, high music interpreter, which can drive up to eight SB1 boards at once. So obviously this is a single channel. If you want polyphonic sound, you'd need to get more and more boards. I'm sure they want you to buy those. Um, so it could drive up to eight of these boards for uh, polyphonic music. Uh, the note duration was uh, 64th up to a whole note. Uh, only took 4K of RAM and used a standard notation for music encoding. All right, so what's that look like? Uh, here it is the Muse X1 high level music interpreter. Real-time 8080. All right, so looks like uh, you sent it commands, whole note, half note, quarter note, WHQ, very cool. Um, so you, t you give this uh, software ASCII commands and I guess it generates music. Some music. Here comes the fun part. Music. A musical scale, one octave, start with middle C. Uh, so I guess that's how you would program it. Oh my goodness. 1044 I. 4QC plus CD plus DEF plus FG plus GA plus AB. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And of course, back in the day, they would just give you the printout. Nice, huh? I don't know how you're supposed to get that into your computer. Uh, I don't know if they, how they would distribute software back then. Um, but there's complete source code for this whole thing. All 4K of it. Wow. Let's take a look here in the back. So 
So here are those uh, waveforms that you can create, those 32-bit, 32-byte uh, uh, waveforms uh, that go into that first DAC. Uh, this one creates a sine wave, so um, triangle wave, fundamental and second harmonic, rectified sine wave, cool, uh, full uh, diapason, if I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, and then different uh, timbers, um, timbre, timbre, I think is what it's called. The timbre of an instrument is what makes it sound like that instrument. It's the overtone series, the, the uh, uh, harmonics of the notes that make a cello sound like a cello or a trumpet sound like a trumpet. Even though they're playing the same note, they have a different uh, harmonic structure, the frequency domain. So I guess this sounds like a cello, that sounds like a trumpet. Interesting. Wow. I don't have too many uh, instruments. Cellos and <laughs> cellos and trumpets. That's all you get. Um, I guess they talk a little bit about the, the theory of the... Um, oh, I see. So if you have multiple cards, you need to mix them together to get to one speaker. Uh, so this is how you do a summation into an op amp uh, that, add, that creates an adder. Uh, Creates a, a, a mux for the uh, for the sound, and then there's probably some ugly little sounds that you might want to filter out. So here's a, a filter circuit that takes out some uh, of the uh, more harsh sounds. Um, music coding sheet, very cool. Okay, here's you go. Here's the cheat sheet. This is what you need to type in to get music. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, and very cool. Uh, oh, they're very close to my house <laughs> uh, on Walsh Avenue in Santa Clara. Interesting. Flight of the Bumblebee. There we go. So just type this in and away you go. Wow. Couple mods, all the boards always used to have mods back in the day, cut and jumps, bodge wires. Very cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Sorry, we goofed. More bodge wires. Alright, so. Not exactly the sound card we have today. <laughs> 